Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F16C and we're looking at using the teapot. Note this is early access, December 2019, so we only have some of the functionality, but I'll show you what we've got now. Here's our aircraft. The first thing I want to show, and the reason why we're in the mission editor, is that this works much better if we have at least one waypoint now the waypoint doesn't have to be near the bad guys the waypoint can be anywhere for this instance i'll just put it hundreds of miles away over there but it's just to show you in early access it works much better with at least one waypoint or steering point next i'll show that we can have the teapot currently only in this station here chin five right we can use it with or without weapons in this case we're going to use it with two gbus this makes it a little bit more confusing in the cockpit as we'll go and see first of all we need to warm it up so if i just remove my stick there it is going to be on this hard point here right hard point so turn that on allow it to power up in our mfd here we can go back to main menu tgp it's currently warming up we need to give it several minutes to warm up and it will become evident when it is warmed up at that point, it's warmed up and ready to go. But in the air now, there are some targets somewhere in front of us. So, master arm on, laser arm on. Back to main menu, let's get the TGP up again. Going to click on standby to actually engage it. We can have air to air, air to ground. Air to air is currently not implemented, so we're going to go to air to ground. We're currently in nav master mode. It works fine in nav master mode with no complications. We're more likely to be using it in air to ground master mode. So now we're in air to ground master mode. Now, if you're going to use it in air to ground master mode, you must not be using it with CCIP. We must change this to, in this case, CCRP. If we use CCIP, then the T pod is automatically used as a laser range finder if we go in ccrp we can use it as a proper manual use of the teapot so it's just something to bear in mind if we go back into it but it shut itself down so let's look at today's controls to fire the designating laser we'll press and hold gun trigger first detent to slew the sensor around we've got rdr cursor up down left and right or we could put that on an axis if we choose change the field of view we've got expand fourth button to change the type of tracking between inr area and point track we've got tms up to re-slew or re-cage the sensor to its default position we've got tms down to change the type of sensor between tv ir white and ir hot we've got tms left uncage switch here will initiate our lss our laser spot search now note that it's pointing out in the middle of nowhere at the moment that's because it's automatically slaved itself to steer point one that i've got selected the first thing we want to do is re-cage this back into position before we can do that we need to make this mfd soy so dms down that's data management switch down now tms target management switch down to recage it into its foresight position from here we can move it with the rdr cursor keys wherever we want to go like thus within the slew limits of the sensor regard slew limits we can see where the sensor is pointing in regards to its slew limits with this guy here the situation awareness cue so if i went up to the top there that is as high as it will go there and the same with the right and the left and the down and it's called the situational awareness cube because by looking at it we know if it's pointing off to the right the left behind us in front of us or if it was in the middle it will be looking directly down it helps us know where we are in relation to where it's looking by using this cue here and again tms down to recage to its natural position which is there here it tells us we're in air to ground mode here is the field of view and we can press this osb or press the shortcut we saw earlier to go between narrow and wide if we're in wide these corners here show the field of view of the narrow here is the zoom we've got binary commands here manual range knob counterclockwise and clockwise or in the axis i use it as an axis here manual ranging knob we can zoom in between zero and nine override i'm not going to press it here but basically it shuts off the sensor control is currently not a feature when it is implemented it will give us a list of extra features that we can use here is our current barometric altitude here is our sensor do we want tv do we want ir where the heat is shown as white or black hot where the heat is shown as black we'll stick on tv laser spot search laser spot track we've got a separate video on that so we're not going over that but it tells you here what prf or laser code we've got set to the laser spot search here is our crosshair in the center here is what the sensor is actually pointing at l here shows that our laser is activated or it's armed declutter currently has no function and these buttons down here take us back to other menus so the next thing to do is to find some bad guys and 
To do that, I'm going to go to white hot, I'm going to go to wide, and I'm going to look around until I find something of consideration. And there is some bad guys, I believe, so I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go to narrow field of view. Right, we do indeed have some bad guys. I'm going to go back to TV. Bunch of Humvees. If I move the cursors out here, we can change between our different types of track. TMS up will change between our different types of track. A point track will actually track a discernible, contrastable object. This is going to be used for actually tracking vehicles. And you can see there's a box around it to show the thing that it is tracking. Now the beauty of point track is it will follow a moving target because it can actually see that vehicle. I press TMS up again. INR. Inertial reference. This is not tracking anything. It's just using the INS system at this point to remember a position. So if we don't have point, we don't have area, we'll have INR. Press it again. Area. This is tracking a piece of terrain. So in the middle of the target gate here, that is the piece of terrain that we are tracking. We can target an area track. We can target a point track. And I'm pretty sure we cannot target an inertial reference. So if I wanted to target this guy here, zoom in a little bit, I could target him by doing an area track or doing a point track. Either will be fine, but like I said, the point track is going to follow him if he moves. If I'm going to do an area track, it's always best to aim at the terrain below him because remember, area is tracking the terrain, not the object. Next, I'm going to find a moving target. So let's see, zoom out and see if we can find the little blighter. There he is. Zoom in on him. So I'm going to put a point track on him and we should see that we should hopefully, hopefully be able to track a moving target. You can see there, we're tracking him with point track. Sometimes TV sensor will not work with point track because it's just not good enough definition. If that's the case, go to white hot or black hot, redesignate, oops, and you usually get a better result with an IR sensor. It's generally a better sensor for using against vehicles. If I want to laser now, press and hold the laser button we saw earlier. That's lasing. You can see the L is flashing on a certain PRF code, and we are now lasing him. If we want to change that PRF code, then we can go to a list and zero and five, and we can now change here our TGP, our designating code, currently 1688. Or if we went down, we could change our laser spot search, laser spot track code. And we would change that by obviously just typing in the code and enter. Next, I want to show that we get symbology on the HUD. Now, with our CTRP selected within our air to ground mode, we got our designator here. You can see it's showing where the sensor is tracking at the moment. So you see that little box with the dot in it is moving about based on where that guy is actually moving. And we can go and, if we like, we can go and drop a GBU on him with a CTRP targeting method. That's all I've got to show for the moment.